Hey guys, so for this video, I'm going to be showing off all the best settings you need to use in Fortnite Chapter 2 Season 7. There's actually been a lot of recent graphic changes, which most people do not know about since Epic does not release patch notes, but don't worry, that is what I'm here for. The settings I'm going to show today will include the best brightness and colorblind mode, the most optimal rendering mode between DX11 and performance, as well as the new graphic settings that, like I said, Epic secretly altered. Pretty much all of these settings should get you an FPS boost, all of them are consistently used by the top tier pro players in the game, so that should tell you that they do work well. Thus, I hope you're all excited, timestamps should be integrated into the video as per usual. Without further ado though, let's get right on into it. Alright, so the first settings we're gonna look at, we are not going in order at all. That's what the timestamps are for. We're going to look at all the graphics quality options. The reason we're looking at these first is because these are the ones that Epic secretly changed how they work. I'll put the blog post for it up on the screen right now. I don't think they even tweeted about it, which was weird because it was pretty detailed, it was very interesting. I'll also link it down below in case you want to read it. To kind of sum it up, they basically made it so when you choose the Epic quality preset, all epic settings. I never recommend this, but I want you guys to understand how it works. Instead of being the old epic settings, I'm gonna apply it. They made it so it's now the next gen settings. My frames are dying right now. You can see though, look at the zone. That is the same exact zone that I got on the Xbox Series S. It has all these cool tiles, not to mention the rest of the map looks sick. The shadows are a lot deeper. Anti-aliasing is a lot more present. All the animations are a tiny bit different. I heard the explosions are sick. I'm gonna have like two FPS. Here we go. <laughs> I just got 10 FPS. <laughs> You can see though, oh my gosh, this looks insane. This is not how the normal graphics, even on Epic, looked before Chapter 2 Season 7. It's beautiful now. And again, the zone is so freaking sick. Now, the other thing they changed, which is a little more important to us, the old Epic settings are now the current high ones. So you see how for anti-aliasing textures, they're all high? This high is the old Epic because the new Epic is the next gen setting. You know what I'm trying to say? Why does it still look the same? Wait a second. They didn't even say this. You still get the console next gen on all high. It's just not as crazy. Like the tiles, they're kind of there, but you can't really see them that well. I guess over here it's easier to see. Bro, they didn't even say that in the actual kind of patch notes that they put out. What are they doing? The reason we care about this is because I always used to say, play on the low quality preset, 100% 3D res. That is what this is. There's no more blocks at all. The settings look way better and my FPS is way more stable. The catch here though is I used to say play on the high textures. Playing on high textures would actually improve your FPS and the reason it would do that is because Fortnite is CPU bound which means it takes up all your CPU cores, all the processes. Oh this llama. Die llama. Meaning when you used high textures you would get more FPS because you were making your GPU do more work, kind of taking the pressure off of your CPU a little bit. Well, because Epic changed all these settings and they made it so the high is the old Epic and the Epic is console next gen, you should no longer be playing on high textures, only medium or low. These are the only two that have not changed. Same with performance mode, which I'm going to talk about next. Oh wait, I'm in zone again. <laughs> so I either recommend playing on low textures, all of these should be on low. Except for view distance, you could play with that on pretty much anything. You just do not want to be playing on high textures anymore. Medium or low only. Do you guys remember the last time I was on this map? Oh my gosh. Wait, let me see the brick. Oh, and the metal. Oh, sorry. Seriously though, what we're gonna cover next is probably the most important. It is under your advanced graphics. I hate how my head blocks half the screen. It is rendering mode, which I currently have on DirectX 11. The question you all should be asking is if you want to play on DX11 or DX12 versus performance mode. DX11, DX12 are very, very similar. It's really performance mode that is different and that I think is the best. That's why I'm currently on DX11. I just want to show 
show you guys that performance mode is better and we're gonna do that by testing my FPS and my input delay. So you guys can see my input delay up in the top left. It's about 2.8 milliseconds. It is really, really low because I'm in creative. I'm on the settings I said I was, which is just all low, 100% 3D res. This is how my builds look. Everything feels crispy. Oh. Okay, I guess it was not crispy enough, huh? When we compare that to performance mode on high meshes, let me swap to it. <laughs> Silly me. Nobody knows I'm gonna secretly restart my game. I am now magically on performance mode. You guys saw nothing. Low textures, no more high. And when I look up, the sky has no clouds. My input delay is around 2.3. FPS is almost hitting 1,000. About 900, I just saw 1,000. Pretty solid. Let's see what it goes to as I build. I see 700. It is definitely higher than DX11. Not by a ton because as you can see, the builds are no longer the bubble wrap that I used to moan over. I loved those builds, but now we got the normal default ones, which, I mean, I don't have a problem with. I just think it's interesting that they changed it to the normal builds. And by the way, which not a lot of people know, Epic never meant for bubble wrap builds to be in the game. They quite literally said on Twitter, it was like an accident. They were never supposed to look like that. They were always supposed to be these default builds that we're used to on DX11 and DX12. For like three seasons, we had the bubble wrap those gave us better fps i think looks cooler and they kind of clickbaited us by saying that's what performance mode originally was while then randomly coming out and saying no there were supposed to be these default builds straight out the get-go like what now you might be asking yourself but jarian wouldn't that mean you should use low meshes those mobile builds will probably get you better fps well that is true and we'll go look at that i gotta leave game first meshes you can only change out of game i'm gonna go put them on low some nice mobile builds. I don't know why this is a glitch. There's just grass. <laughs> when I look up, okay, the FPS is a little higher. It's reached 1,000 a few times. Input delay, again, it doesn't seem to move from the low 2 millisecond range. These are how the builds look. They are literally mobile builds. They feel way better, which is part of why you get higher FPS. In terms of ranking the different rendering modes, it would go DX12, DX11, kind of tied for last play. I do not recommend using either of them because performance mode is just so much better. I do think this mobile builds or the low mesh performance mode is probably the best for your FPS. Like you guys can see, I look cracked as hell and I'm an old boomer. Whoa, bro! Mobile builds feel so good, and they get you crazy FPS. Me personally, however, I just cannot get used to them. There's a few pros like Power Muzz, who's the best in OCE. He has gotten used to them, and he's a demon on them. The man wins cash cups. He won FNCS with them. I think Lecce uses them too. So if you want to use them, go ahead and do. I just, it's so hard to see people through your builds. Like I said, though, as long as you're using performance, mode whatever meshes you're on does not matter just please play on performance mode performance mode grays out all these other settings so you pretty much just have textures which like i said you put on low just use performance mode man of course, since we're going to be playing on performance mode, we need some colorblind modes. In Chapter 2 Season 7, I feel like the zone is really not too hard to see on performance mode now. They did change it. They also changed how it is inside the storm. Like, I'm on no colorblind mode right now, and I can pretty clearly see the storm. I guess it's a little harder if I was near water, but this is how it looks inside storm. It used to be pretty much crystal clear. What I would recommend are three three different options. The first, like I said, no colorblind mode, 80 to 100% brightness. It does make the game look a little more vibrant because 100% is really bright. It's kind of all up to you guys though. I just use the default. I'm just a generic white guy. The next thing I would recommend is Protonope 5 or really Protonope between 5 and 7. Brightness still 100%. The greens are a bit darker in this one. Blues are a bit brighter. I know a bunch of pros who play on this. It's kind of like a tone 
toned down version of Deuteranope. The storm is definitely easier to see just because it contrasts so much more with the green grass. The final and probably the most popular colorblind mode though, oh, I passed it, is Tritonope 10, 50% brightness. Here's what that looks like. It's so colorful. Oh my gosh. But we're not done yet. You guys might remember I showed this last season, the final trick for this. It's actually outside the game. What you're gonna do is right click on your desktop, go to the Nvidia control panel. By the way, the Knicks were good this season. You guys cannot roast me. On the top left where it says display settings, you have adjust desktop color settings. You're gonna click that, go all the way down to digital vibrance, and you're gonna crank that bad boy up to about 80%. There we go, apply. In game, you guys can see it is so colorful, which is great because now the zone is so much easier to see. This is performance mode and I can make out the zone so easily. Way better than no colorblind mode in terms of seeing the actual storm. Way better than protonope. It's kind of your preference because the normal colors like the purples, they do look a bit crazy. Protonope is not as colorful as this. Holy. Imagine someone had the purple superhero skin and they were just chilling right here. I would be able to see them. No, but for real, I think this is probably the best colorblind mode you can get if you have trouble seeing the storm. Remember, the three options are no colorblind mode, anything from 100 to 80% brightness. Then there's also 100% brightness, protonope, anything from really 5 to 7. You can go up to 10. You can do whatever you want. These are the tritonope. It's tritonope 10, 50% brightness, 80% digital vibrance, and boom, you will never not see the storm again. So just use one of those three settings. Yeah. The second to last major settings we have are the display at the top. Window mode, as I always say, use full screen. The game literally tells you the game will run slightly faster in full screen mode. Please, use full screen. Resolution, you only have three options, but I kind of recommend one that's not here. Wink, wink. So what I mean by that is I recommend trying out stretched res. A vast majority of pros actually use stretch. I know Face Scented does, Nada, Skittles, I think DGen uses Stretched as well. Stretched Res is really, really nice. And the one I personally recommend is 1680 by 1050. I'll put some gameplay of me using it in my trying every Stretched Res video. This is the res that Martos kind of made famous. And I'm telling you guys, it is so good. I was demolishing people with it. I felt like I could not miss any shots. Everything was a little bit more zoomed in, which made me kind of focus more on my opponent and what I was actually doing. It was not too stretched, like later in the video, I used ridiculously stretched resolutions, so I know what too stretched is. 1650 by 1080 is that beautiful middle ground. It is by far the best res I have personally played on in chapter two, let alone season seven, and I really wish I could use it. I play native since I'm a content creator, but if I was not, I would 100% be using 1680 by 1050. I'll put a video up on the screen now of how you can actually get it using display scaling. Display scaling is pretty much the best method for stretch res because you get the least amount of input delay. This will say 1680 by 1050 in game if you do it correctly. It's pretty cool and like I said, it's the best res. Finally, frame rate limit, or not finally, we have one more section after this, but display, final frame limit setting thing. Use the one above your monitor's refresh rate. So if you're on 144, play 165. If you have a 60 hertz monitor, play 120. If you have 240 like me, you can play 360. But most people really cannot get 360 stable FPS, so you're kind of better off on 240. The only time I'd recommend 360 is if you're like Booga and you have a 360 hertz monitor. I don't have one, but maybe I should get one. Let me know down below. I'll splurge. That'd be a cool video. I kind of get stable 360 and creative. I think Raider has one. I might have to ask him. I'm getting too off track. Those are all the display settings. All we have left, dun dun dun. Three advanced graphics, or well, I'll show all of them, okay? Transition time. 
Guys, I am so bougie. I went back to my old island. This is the OG island I showed all my tips and tricks on. Only the OGs know. I went back just for the last three settings. <laughs> Advanced graphics settings, you're gonna be on performance mode, so there's only three. V-Sync, turn off. Voice crack. Show FPS, have on. Rendering mode, I already covered. Performance. But if you want these other settings, if for some reason you're playing on DX11, please don't. Use performance mode. Then motion blur, you should have off multi-threaded rendering usually you want on you can try both and look it says setting is disabled when performance mode is selected use gpu crash debugging off latency markers put off i only have them on because they're the things in the top left that show me my input delay by the way to enable them you have to go to your hud setting and put latency debug stats turn that on i'm gonna turn it off finally nvidia reflex low latency it's disabled with performance mode but put on plus boost if you're you're not using performance. Latency flash, always off. DLSS, always off. It's not that useful. And yeah, that's basically all the settings. I'll probably put this as a separate section where I show these are the best settings. Oh wait, 240. If you want to copy my settings, these are what I believe to be the best. 1920. Or well, I recommend 1680 by 1050. 240 FPS. It depends on your monitor's refresh rate. I'm on no colorblind mode. You guys can use either Protonope 5 or Tritonope 10. 3D res, you can actually use pretty much anywhere from like 80 to 100. I think 100 looks the best. View distance, this is up to you guys. You do get sort of an advantage the higher it is, but textures, like I said, low or medium. Then performance mode, show FPS. These are the best settings in Fortnite Chapter 2 Season 7. Let's go! Overall, guys, those are the best settings in Fortnite Chapter 2 Season 7. So if you enjoyed the video or you learned something new, do be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel somewhere down here, and to turn on my post notifications. Shout out to everyone on the screen for using code Jarian. I appreciate each and every one of you. Like I've been saying recently, I know a ton of you use my code for the battle pass. Let me know and I will shout you out. I want to shout out everyone at least once. Otherwise, that's it for me, and I will see you guys in the next one. Later.